that are incarcerated, but people that are, you know, have their freedom. They want to do so many things, but they don't follow through. Yeah. So I can say all day long, I'm going to write a book, but start writing it. Right. You know, and then I can say, okay, well, I have a manuscript. Now what's next? Okay, you go and you research. Right. Research is very important in anything that you want to do. Find out how to go about doing it. Mm -hmm. And I found out, you know, acquiring an editor, finding a printing company. Mm -hmm. And I was already, I'm a boss. Mm -hmm. So I already knew that I wasn't going to waste my time and send out my manuscript because a million people are sending manuscripts, manuscripts to these companies, and the chances of getting that are as slim as the chances of getting signed to a record label. Mm -hmm. And um, I always wanted to be an independent artist, have my own record label. I always wanted to do things myself. So I said the route for me was straight off the bat, self-publishing. Mm -hmm. and, um, and I did it. And I managed to put out two books within six months. 2011 was my year. I put out Tales of Original Bad Girl and my follow-up, Daisy Jones, which is my first fiction. Mm -hmm. I'm so excited about it because it stamps me as an official author. Okay. It's easy to write your life story, but mm -hmm. to create characters, plots, twists, turns, is a whole different ball game. Well, so how did this transition to that come? There's the writing of your story, which of course, in so many different levels, helps, helps in so many different ways. But now, as an author, and you're moving towards fiction, what inspired you to, to continue on that path of being an author? Funny thing, Tales of Original Bad Girl was written since my release. I wrote this book in 2010. It took me 30 days. 30 days? 30 days it took me. Um, Daisy Jones was written while I was in prison on this last bid. It took me two years. Okay. I already knew. I had my plans. I said, when I come home, I'm going to release a book. What I didn't know was that I was going to do my life story. I thought I was just going to come out with the Daisy Jones. But I had a conversation with um, a lovely lady from Ar uh, Atlantic Records, uh, uh, executive Atlantic Records. I was in um, California, and she had host, got, you know, sent me out there to host a party. Class. But anyway, as me telling her my life story, she said, girl, there ain't no money in music. You need to write your book and tell your story. And it was my aha moment, <laughs> like Oprah says. And I said, you're right. Maybe I should hold up on Daisy and put out, you know, my story so my people, my supporters, my fans that, that know me from music will connect with me and know who I am and know that, you know, I'm just not a fly, you know, just a fly-by-night author. I have a story to tell. Yeah, and then strategically speaking, your, your true story, your story that you take to these different places, literally, that when you do your motivational speaking, I'm sure that you also you, you, uh, you advertise your book and you, you say you give some books away all the time. And it's to help the youth coming up. And it's a, that right there plants you <laughs> as far as having a market for anything else that you have coming Cross along. Cross promotion, yes. baby. I took up marketing in college when I was in prison. Mm -hmm. And before uh, they cut the prison program, which that's a tragedy too, you know, you can't um, get your free degrees anymore. You have to do online or uh, some sort of thing where they do um, where they mail in. You know, you can take courses. But when I was in prison, they actually had the, inst the uh, professors come from, I was in Genesis College, Genesis College in um, upstate New York, in Albion, New York. And the, pre the pr professors from Genesis College would come into the prison and have the classes and, and hold these courses with the inmates that signed up for um, college. And um, it was sad, I was I managed to do about a year, I had a 4.0 grade point average, but I couldn't graduate, because they cut the program. Wow. Um, and I didn't sad. pursue it when I came home. So mm -hmm. I didn't get a, a full associate's degree, but I got enough knowledge mm -hmm. while I was in there to say, okay, I know how to market, I know how to promote, I'm gonna use this to get my talents out there. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and that's what I did. And mm -hmm. I came home, like I said, and just continued the research and got books on it. You know, Dan Pointer has a great book about self-publishing, um, self-publishing for dummies. It's out there, Googling, being on the internet. God knows the internet has saved me millions <laughs> in, in terms of promoting. Yes. Facebook, shout out to all my fans on Facebook, like my Facebook page, Mac Mama. Um, you know, Twitter, it's a great tool, mm -hmm. and you have to know how to utilize that internet, mm -hmm. you know, um, to just get whatever you're doing, it, be it books, music, you know, uh, if you want to just uh, dance or sing, use the YouTube. Yeah. So you many know, people, people are, are discovered, discovered overnight. Absolutely. So I just love the, uh, the time, for, everything is a time frame. Yes. 
And it wasn't my time then, but it's my time now. Mm-hmm. And I'm utilizing this technology age. I love it, you know? And it just saves you so much money. Because when you're doing stuff independently, your re- resources, your financial resources are not going to be what you, you know, what, what a major company is going right. to have. Right. But you got to be innovative. Mm-hmm. You know, you got to get your flyers out there. Yes. I hustle, I grind. The same way you out there selling crack. Yes, the course. You know what I mean? Yes. Selling your ass or yes. whatever you're into. Yes. Whatever you were doing to get you in trouble, you use that and you use it for positive. That same energy. And I that get same out there. Because it's a skill set. It's a skill set. And I sell And is it either legal or it's illegal? But, but the truth is, it's a skill set. If you know, if you work good with people, if you work good with numbers, you work, if you're a good uh, strategist, if you, I mean, yeah, it's and it, that goes ties back into the choice that we were talking about earlier. What are you going to choose to use those skill sets in? Um, just to go back a little, as far as where you are now compared to where you were at fourteen, that anger that you spoke about, ha, is it still there? Has it? Have you replaced it with something else? Has it? Have you transitioned that energy to? Uh, in another source or another outlet, or is it something you still deal with on a daily basis? And how, what would be your advice to those out there with the same similar, you know, they changed their life, but they may not have changed that feeling of that, that void that may still be there or may not be there. Well, the void of missing my mom is always going to be there. I just really stopped, like, crying about five years ago. I was crying for my mother every year for about 15 years. Um, anger management. If you know, if you know anybody that's incarcerated and you know they're constantly fighting and getting in trouble, please tell them to take those anger management classes. They work. Mm-hmm. They teach you skills that you use, and a lot of the skills are based on really common sense, thinking about the consequences of your action. I think about it every day when I'm in the clubs, and you know I feel tension. I immediately remove myself from that you know, and from that environment. Or if I'm somewhere and someone says something to me and my normal reaction would be to jump on that person because that's where I come from. Mm-hmm. You know, I, and I, a great example of that is I dealt with that. Um, a lady, I was selling my books, quick story. I was selling my books in front of um, Nathan's and Coney Island mm-hmm. all summer long. Mm-hmm. Oh, I had a beautiful time meeting up so many tourists coming there. And that's what I mean about the hustle. And you get out there and I had my table set up and I made a lot of money. The manager and Nathan started hating. And it seems like now she just waited to this end of the summer to say, you can't be in front of Nathan's. Now, in the state of New York, you can sell your books without having a vendor's license under the First Amendment. You know, and so you see a lot of the African yes, vendors. Yes. That's why they're all, all over, mm-hmm. because they don't need vendor's license to sell books or artwork. So I explained that to her as calmly as I could. And she was going off, but she was just so angry. And I'll never forget, it was uh, 9-11, just past, 9-11, September 11th. And uh, she was just very angry. And I was like, wow, uh, maybe she had a bad day. But what she proceeded to do was snatch the water out of my hand. I had sent um, one of the uh, locals, the Coney Island locals, like kind of like vagrant, like the bum guys uh-huh. that like, walked the beach walk. I sent him to get me a glass of water from her, a cup of water before she said something to me. So she said, well, I don't have to serve you. And she snatched the cup out of my hand. Her fingers literally touched my hand. Ayana, (laughs) it took God Mm -hmm. and everything I learned in anger management, because I quickly processed it. I was like, my first reaction was to jump on this woman. You assaulted me. But I said, she wants me to go to jail. Yes. I immediately it's thought. It's not worth it. I said, she wants me to go. She wants me to hit her. She literally said to me, hit me. Hit me. And that's when I said, whoa. Whoa, you've been down that road. The <laughs> devil is yes. a liar and Satan, I see you. <laughs> and I said, mm-mm. And I said, you know what, ma'am? And, I, and I, I said to her, you don't even know me. I said, and you would touch my hand and, and snatch it. I said, but I know what you want me to do. Mm-hmm. And I'm not going to do it. Mm-hmm. And I packed my stuff up. You know, but I made the police come. I said, because she said, I'm calling the cops. I said, call the cops. Mm -hmm. Because I wanted her to know I'm not leaving for you. Mm -hmm. Because I don't have to leave. But I'm going to leave for the authority. Okay, well, Listen, when authority came, oh, they loved me. Because I'm a class act. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And when the police came, I explained to them my situation. I said very quickly, officer, I I don't even want to stay here. 
I'm going to leave, but I'm leaving because you're asking me to, not her. I'm going to show her that she's no authority over me. That's full circle. That full is circle. full circle. The and other way, I'd have been in cuffs because she'd have been on the ground bleeding. Okay. And it's real. Well, then you answer my question about the anger. But I want to wrap up now. And okay. before I wrap up, I want to let you know out there, viewers, about Mac Mama's two books, Tales of an Original Bad Girl and Daisy Jones. You can visit www.starstatuspublishing.com and you can also visit her personal website, macmamaworld.com. And for all of you ebook readers, you can find it online at stores on Amazon, Barnes and Nobles, and or iBooks for $2.99. I believe that's the holiday uh, discount rate. Well, I want to thank you for watching the show. I hope you enjoyed it and found it to be informative. Remember, whatever circumstances in life you find yourself in, each new day presents the opportunity to remake yourself and change directions. Change is never easy, and it takes commitment and hard work, but it is an equal opportunity for everyone, no matter how difficult life may seem. Thanks for watching, and have a good night. Until the next time. <laughs>